Coming up on Mountain News this morning, meet the local volleyball team finding success after a recent reboot. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning. If you're peeking your eyes open and having a little trouble looking at that clock, let me take care of that problem for you. It's 635 on this Friday, July the 10th. I'm Will Puckett, and thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Talking about having trouble reading clocks, both Brandon and I are tuckered out, and we hope this next about 25 minutes is the quickest 25 minutes we'll be doing all week. But Brandon, it's going to be a warm one today, but you're telling us short-term relief is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Here, I got I got a cup of coffee for you, Will. If you, if you need it, I'll, I'll pass it through, uh, and hopefully you'll get it through the screen there. But this morning, it's a beautiful sign outside the uh, Buffalo Mountain camera there up on top of the mountain. A few little clouds already starting to develop there this morning. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s, still muggy out there, but again... Hopefully after that cold front comes through today, things will improve a little bit. The outdoor forecast takes us into the upper 80s once again. But when the cold air or the cold air from that front starts to sweep in along with those rain chances, we'll dry off pretty or dry out and uh, die down pretty quickly. They're already into the 70s by 7 o'clock tonight. I'll have the rest of that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All righty, Brandon. Thank you, sir. Well, in less than 12 hours, Kentuckians will be required to wear face masks in public. Governor Andy Bashir announced the executive order Thursday mandating masks. That is after several days of increasing case numbers here in the Commonwealth. Yesterday, Kentucky surpassed 18,000 total cases. The governor says the order is necessary to stop the cases from go growing out of control. Nick Oliver has more on the governor's new order. We've seen other states take the action and now it's Kentucky's turn at the mandatory mask order. We don't have to shut everything down if we will all follow these instructions and wear a facial covering. The governor announcing the executive order after a week full of increased cases in the bluegrass. Enforcement will be left up to local leaders like the health department and can come with warnings or even a fine. The governor, of course, speaking on the masks for quite a long time during that news conference and also talking about business owners and their obligation. And it's going to be as simple as if someone won't wear a mask uh, in your place of business, then they cannot be served. It's that simple. I think it's a good idea just to keep people safe. We spoke to several people this evening, some fans, others not, as well as not being interested in being interviewed. But we met Marianne Holtkamp. She says she gets it, but knows the state will feel growing pains in the process. More and more people do wear masks. I think they will eventually. I don't know about right now, but they might later. It's really going to come down to whether we let personal pride or some belief that we have liberty to spread this thing to others and therefore shouldn't have to wear Something like this, it's all going to come down to whether we are willing to do it. At the Capitol, Nick Oliver, WYMT Mountain News. Now the governor says significant consequences will be placed on businesses that do not enforce the new mandate. Well, the U.S. set another record for new coronavirus cases Wednesday with more than 59,000 infections. Texas and California both reported their highest single-day death toll. Hospitalizations more than doubled in Texas in the last two weeks. Despite a surge of cases in Florida, Disney World in Orlando held a preview yesterday for pass holders before the park formally reopened Saturday. In Arizona, less than 150 ICU beds are left statewide. However, officials in L.A. say its infection rate is decreasing. Well, Kentucky Senate President Robert Stivers says a bill is in the work that would ban the use of no-knock warrants in the state. The issue has gained nationwide attention after the shooting death of Breonna Taylor in Louisville. Police were executing a no-knock warrant the night that she was shot. Chelsea Jones breakdown, breaks down the details of the bill. Kentucky Senator Robert Stivers is pushing this message. There is not a place um, in law enforcement for a no-knock 
search warrant. Today, the Republican Senate president announced he's sponsoring a bill that bans no-knock warrants. The move comes after Breonna Taylor died at the hands of three Louisville police officers. They were executing a no-knock warrant related to a drug investigation. We're not talking about whether she was right or wrong, but for whatever was done there, they could have asked her when she came home from work. We have a search warrant. As she walked out of the house, uh, the next morning, we have a search warrant, but a no-knock warrant at 1 o'clock at night, that's bad policing. However, Stiver's bill does allow officers to execute a search warrant during an arrest. It requires the approval of law authorities and mandates that special police units issue the warrant when there's likely to be harm. Officers who violate the bill's parameters could lose qualified immunity and even their state certification. Stiver says the bill is gaining support on both sides of the aisle. Again, I have to say, you know, no, no no not warrants have a long and bloody history. But some lawmakers are somewhat critical, like Senator Danny Carroll, a former police officer. I'm not completely sold on totally doing away with uh, search warrants with no knocks. There are times if you're working a homicide case. Either way, Stiver says this bill is a step in the right direction and hopes it starts a dialogue on better policing. Now, lawmakers say other issues to address include officer training, transparent reporting, and de-escalation tactics. Well, Wolf County Volleyball's program has grown into a 14th region mainstay since 2011. So much so that Lady Wolves have taken home four out of the five KVCA 14th Region Player of the Year awards. Kendra Willoughby started the movement in 2015, and Brooke Trompler and Haley Stone continued the tradition in the past three years, creating a legacy within the program. The tradition carries on, like... Since, since it's such a small place, like we're showing everyone that we can be bigger and better than what we are and like how hard we practice. The legacy is, is once you have one, everybody wants to be one. And if you make it, if, if, if the legacy follows itself, everybody wants their teammates to be one. The Lady Wolves are still in search of their first outright 14th region volleyball title. Well, one county in our region is giving parents a choice on how their students will receive their education this fall. Kimberly Kagey spoke with the Pike County, Kentucky education leaders to find out some changes you can expect to see this year. For Pike County students, there's a choice on education online or in person for the upcoming school year. We're going to do everything possible uh, to protect our kids, but at the same time, we need to educate our kids and uh, we prefer face to face. But that's not an option. Parents have the option of, of course, doing virtual learning. With virtual learning, kids will have the option to learn on the field too. They were concerned about um, the the sports as it relates to virtual learning. Can they participate? And they can. There's another thing that you'll need to add to your carts during back to school shopping: face masks. First through 12th grade students will be required to wear them on the bus and while attending in-person classes. Regarding kids down to Head Start and Preschool, they're not required to wear a mask. All other kids will wear a mask uh, unless they can practice the six foot social distancing. And we will follow all CDC guidelines. Preparing to safely head back into the classroom, whether online or in person. Kimberly Keggy, WSAZ News Channel 3, Pike County. Helpers and Heroes, sponsored by Wolf Williams and Reynolds, serving Eastern Kentucky for Social Security Disability and Federal Black Lung. Time now for our daily highlight of those serving on the front lines during this worldwide health pandemic. Let's go on to our first picture this morning. It comes to us from Diane. This is her daughter, Althea Bryant. During the pandemic, she has been making cloth masks and giving them away to people that need them. Althea doesn't take any money. She just wanted to help. Uh, she says she just wanted to help others stay safe. We appreciate you so much, Althea. Thank you for going above and beyond. Our next picture was submitted by Lisa. This is Earl Duggar. He is a lab tech at Harlan ARH. In addition to being a healthcare hero, he is also a veteran. We thank him for his service, not only to our community, but to our country. And finally, our last 
picture today was sent in by Alicia. This is her granddaughter, Jordan Downs. She is a CNA at Signature Healthcare's Heritage Hall facility in Lawrenceburg up in Anderson County. Alicia tells us that uh, Jordan has worked through this outbreak and loves what she does. Thank you, Jordan, for being awesome. And if you want to submit your healthcare hero or frontline worker, please do so. Still plenty of time to do that. You can head over to the website at WIMT.com, search for helpers and heroes, or send me a message on my Facebook page, Brandon Robinson, WIMT. Bill. All righty, Brandon. Thank you. And thank you to those helpers and heroes as well. Can't do it without you. Well, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. Up ahead, a three car collision has left a major highway shut down near Lexington. What routes officials recommend to beat the traffic?